Do, 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 do. Welcome, everyone. Uh, looking forward to having a chat with you all today. Um, oh, there's a noise outside. Uh, pop into the chat. Let me just turn this down. Um, it's still my birthday in the US. This is fantastic. I can celebrate twice with you guys. Let me just start the timer. Um, why does it go 15 minutes? Uh, start stopwatch. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I get to celebrate my birthday twice. Uh, I get it once here in Australia and then once with you guys in Europe and also in, um, in the USA because it's still the 27th over there, guys. So I said to Kerry yesterday, it's great, I'll get two birthdays. <laughs> so uh, just having, we're in pre-show at the moment, guys. Um, we've got around about, what have we got, five or six minutes uh, before we start. Um, so if you can, love it if you could give me a thumbs up. Uh, just so no one panics, if they do see I've got stitches in my head, um, I've actually had a, well, I, th I think it's probably a skin cancer they've taken out. Now, if they find it is skin cancer, I'm going to have to get a bigger, a slightly bigger one done out. I've had one taken off before, off my head up there, so I'm not worried. Uh, you've just got to get them early. Um, so that's why, that's why I've got stitches in my head. So I'll mention it a couple of times. If I don't mention it, I'm going to get a million questions later on about what is that thing on your head. Um, so thank you so much for the happy birthday, everyone. Um, I'm just going to go through some comments to see who's here. So let's see who's here for the morning. We've got Dr. Simon Frelich. Best wishes from the UK. Looking forward to watching the show in the morning. Bought the uh, bowling light on your recommendation. I know that light is fantastic. Uh, I took it to a meetup that I had, a Sony Alpha meetup in Melbourne on the weekend, and everyone loved it. They, they were all saying that they wanted to have it. Uh, it's such a great light. Uh, Oreo's here too. Too hot to sleep. Still over 30 degrees. You know, it's a lot hotter than here, Aria. What are we today? We're top of um, 18 Celsius today. Uh, so it's not cold. It's actually quite nice. It is our winter, though. Um, so, boy, yeah, I bet you are hot at that time. If it's 30 at 1.45 a.m. in the morning, you'll have trouble sleeping. Chris said, hello. Uh, about how early does the pre-show start? Well, we're on here now. Um, I know those nights in California, USA, where I live, uh, the nights are hot even after 11 p.m. Yeah, we're the same here in summer as well. 42 Pro says, I feel your pain. I'm currently working on the coast and the rental house air conditioning was broke for two days. Oh, no. Um, Jimmy says, 35, 1.8 looks good. I'm going to talk about that uh, as one of the stories today. So it does look good from what I've seen. Charles said, don't forget to have a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Charles. Really appreciate that. Dana says, hello from Florida. Torben says, hey, everyone. Hero says, whoa, just in time. Uh, Jimmy says, hi. Chris is also saying, hello, David. Um, Styles is saying, hi, everyone. That's my dog, Ziggy, out there barking. Uh, Hero says, some dude bought my Sigma 105 1.4 on the spot today for $1,800. Wow. Why did you sell it, though? You just didn't like it, Hero? I love that lens. Uh, I didn't buy it, though, but I did love using it. What are you going to get to replace it? Um, Chris says, happy birthday, David. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. Um, Carl says, hello, David and friends. No damn votes yet. I oh, know, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, Dana, amazing, really. Stylus says, happy birthday. Carl says, uh, no notification. Yeah, I know, I don't know what's going on with the YouTube notification. I really don't. What does HBD stand? Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> I think, what does that stand for? Uh, Hero says, happy birthday, Lord Osler. Oh, thank you so much, Hero. Um, Dave says, oh, hang on. I think I missed some stuff. Uh, where were we? It jumps, which drives me nuts. I am expecting a delivery too, so if it does come, um, I'll have to run and get it. Uh, Dave said, woohoo, made your live stream. Carl says, hello, David. Uh, Fred says, happy birthday, David, from Los Angeles. Um, Kyle is in New York. Aldrich's saying, hey, everyone. Torben says, just finished up a translation job and sent it to the client. Time for pouring some Coke Zero into my skull near David, uh, to hear David's rant. Happy birthday, Stubby. Yeah, I should have got one this morning. It's just a bit early now with Daylight Savings finished. Um, I will be having my Stubbies a game with you later on. I just got a donation. 
Jean, uh, $5, happy birthday. Here's a little uh, <laughs> gift for your Tamron 17 to 28 fund. Oh, thank you so much, Jean. Really appreciate that. <clears throat> Carl says, happy birthday. Philip said, happy birthday, youngster. You know what? I'm 60. Um, but I honestly still feel like I'm 25. I don't think guys ever grow up. And I said this to Kerry yesterday. She goes, do you feel older? And I went, no. Um, I still feel like I'm 25. And I've still got the enthusiasm I have when I was 25. Um, I don't think I'll ever change probably till the day I die. And, and you know what? I'm in the best industry because... In this industry, age has nothing to do with it uh, at all. And age does not slow you down or stop you doing art, which is the best part about this industry. Uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, really happy about that. Sorry, I'm still a bit snuffly from the cold. I feel fine, though. Uh, I've just got this cold that I just, you know, still got a blocked nose. Um, Dave said, happy birthday, Barry. He says, good morning, David. How long have we got? Another couple of minutes. Um, have you heard about the Canon 1DX Mark II? No, I haven't. Has that been announced, has it? And Paint says, happy birthday. Uh, tell them this skin cancer lark is normal in Oz. It is, David. That's the problem. Uh, here in Australia, we have the highest cases of skin cancer in the world. Uh, our sun is very strong. Um, and that's why I'm getting this cut out. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm probably pretty sure it is one. Uh, they took it out pre precautionary. Uh, now, if they see that it is a skin cancer, then they'll take what they call an area of margin. Uh, so they'll take a little bit of a bigger cut. Uh, I've had one before, so I'm not worried about it. it. Like I said, I'll mention it a couple of times. If I don't, people are going to say, what on earth has happened to your head? Um... Sup, everyone. How's it going? Ted said, uh, Sean said, when is Tamron 17 to 28 coming out? Well, I heard that it was going to be announced today. Has it been announced anywhere for pre-order uh, so i'm just curious to know uh, i'll have to have a look shortly jim's here g'day jim g'day brett good to see you in here um Dwayne said i got the notification well that's good some do some don't thank you so much for the donation gene uh, also saying hi as well hr images is in here as well g'day hannah good to see you in here um chris said uh what gear did you order now no, well i don't know what it is uh, i've got it well I got a, a rig from Small Rig yesterday. I've got this great cage that I'll show you. Um, it's for the A6400 and it's uh, an, an L bracket. So I'll review that shortly for you. Uh, it could possibly be, I have ordered a new stick for my Osmo Action. So I've ordered something for that. Uh, it's, it's a great little stick and I'll show you it when I get it. I've paid for it. Uh, but it has like a little tripod stand at the bottom and it also goes out very, very far. So because I love the Osmo Action so much, uh, I thought that might be a great feature to get, particularly for when I go to the US in Feb. So it could be that. It may also be um, a uh, ND filter that I've got. I've, I've bought the Peter McKinnon ND, the six to 10 stop one. So it may be that that's coming and I'll let you know how that is. Now I have purchased that. Uh, Gerald actually sent it to me. Um, I had to get it sent from Amazon to Gerald. There's a story about it, which I'll tell you <laughs> one day. But anyway, um, so that could be coming today. And also, a, um, I can't pronounce the name, a Fayon gimbal is coming to me. Uh, it's the 2000 model that I'm really excited to try out. Now, that's being sent to me to review. So I'll let you know how that is uh, when I get that. So I'm not sure what it could be. And sometimes it might just be something I've forgotten I've ordered. <laughs> um Seven says, happy birthday. Thank you so much. I know. How good is this? I can spend my birthday with you guys. Uh, so I get two birthdays. I love it. Um, Hero says, I was taking pictures with it at the zoo and the guy wanted to see the pictures I took with it because he's heard so much about it. I showed them and he was blown away and said, how much do you want? Oh, I love it. So he sold it. Uh, Dana said, just received a notification. Kyle says, uh, the stitches are from your wife hitting you. I know, I should have said something like that. I should have said I bought another lens or something. And um, she'd hit me over the head. <laughs> oh, I love it. Brett says, happy birthday. Thank you, Brett. Um, Jim said, thumbs up. Let's uh, the count to match the count of viewers. Yeah, please, if you can, give a thumbs up. Because YouTube does not notify people. Uh, it seems something's wrong with it. Um, here I said, I said uh, $1,600 so I can get a new one. And he said, here's $1,800 cash. Wow. Um, 60, yep, Henrik, I'm 60 years old. But like I said, I feel like I'm 25. I feel fantastic. And that's uh, the, the great thing about it. Um, 
Who wants to grow up, Bill? I agree totally. Uh, Jim said, happy birthday, mate. 60 is a great age, young man. Well, they do say the 60 is the new 40, don't they? Um, Brett said, "A mind in mind, we stay young. I think we do, that's for sure. Oh, I got another donation too. Thank you, Sean. Really appreciate that. Oh, I've got another one down there. Um, <laughs> Casper had to ask, what happened to my head, Casper? I was just saying, I think it's a skin cancer. Uh, look, it's precautionary, but I've had one taken out before that was a little bit further up, so I'm pretty sure it is one. Uh, it's called squamous cell carcinoma. If you leave them, they can be fatal. But if you get them early, uh, there's 99.9% .9 they'll be cured. So it's all about getting in early. Um, so I just went, they did a puncture test. That's what this is. It's a small incision. If they find it's skin cancer, they'll take a little bit more out. But I'm not worried about it. Uh, like I said, I've had one before. It's all about getting it early. Um... MBW says, um, can, can finally compete the full frame 1.8 series 3550. I'm going to talk about that shortly. Uh, Dave gave me $5. Thank you so much, Dave. Great idea, Gene. Uh, happy birthday. Uh, gave me $5. Thank you so much. I just got another donation. Who was that from? Sean also gave me 99 cents. Thank you much, Sean. Chris, woo, 1999. Thank you so much. Um, a couple more minutes, guys, and we'll start. Uh, just waiting for everyone to get online. Sammy said, happy birthday, David. You deserve a million subscribers for all you do for the photography and Sony community. Thank you so much, Sam. Look, it doesn't matter so much for me. You guys are all that matter to me. You know, I mean, you've been with me since the start, and um, that means a lot. Like I said, it's more like friends to me. I'd prefer to have 20,000 engaging um, uh, people following me than 100,000 and not have them all engaging with me. So if it happens, it happens. Uh, but I just love the fact that, you know, you're all my friends. Um, I can't pronounce the name, but Tamron 17 to 28, uh, it's way too long. What do you think? Guess uh, when will be the release date? Well, I think probably if they're saying it might be on pre-order from today, but I'll have to wait and see. But um, I don't think it's too long, no. I think it's a, it's a good balance. If you're in the Tamron realm and you get the Holy Trinity, I think the next one will be the 70 to 200. That, that's probably going to come out this time next year. Um, so then if you have all of those lenses, uh, I think it's a great setup. You, you may need something wider, though. And look, the price you're paying for the 17 to 28, if you purchase that lens, the amount that you save... You could buy a Prime, and, and that's the thing, a wide-angle Prime. I just have to say hello to, I think Michael gave me a donation too. Uh, Sammy gave me $5. Happy birthday. Thank you so much, Sammy. Michael gave me $20. Thank you so much, Michael. Sean gave me another 99 cents. Thank you so much, Sean. Really appreciate it. Um, love these birthdays. <laughs> I should be my birthday more often. Um, so I don't think it's too long at all, no. And, and I love the Tamron 17, uh, the 28 to 75. Uh, love it. And I'll talk about the, there's a first review coming out, uh, unbiased probably review of the Tamron. Hopefully I can still get one um, fairly soon. I must contact them. Uh, but it looks like it's very sharp. So um, Mark saying hello. Hazza saying hello. Uh, happy birthday. Uh, Chris said, for your information, WPPI is giving away floor passes on their site with the code Vegas. I'll have to look at that, um, Chris. Uh, I'll have to do that after it. Let me just write that down. I'll grab a pen. I still don't know whether, and this is what I have to, um, this is what I've got to talk to you about. Because I don't know whether I'll get, is it worthwhile, and some people may let me know, is it worthwhile to get the media pass for WPPI? Or am I better off just to say, get that floor pass? Or am I better off to buy one of the workshop passes? Let me know the people that have been there before. Because I was talking to Kerry about it yesterday and we, we really aren't sure what to do. And I think someone else gave me a donation. Um, where, where are we? Uh, Jelani uh, gave $2. Happy birthday. Here's 1% towards the Tamron. Thank you so much, Jelani. Jim, $10. Thank you so much. Wow, you guys are incredible. <laughs> uh, Chris and Moomer, $19. Uh, $99. Um, 111 viewers. Uh, light on the thumbs up, 40. Uh, haven't been able to catch your live streams lately. Happy birthday. Thank you, Lee Monk. Uh, Raw Dank says, Happy birthday. 
uh, ever had moonshine? No, I haven't had moonshine. Is, is moonshine an American drink? I, I don't know. I've never had it. Um, Carl says, David, at 60, you're going to have to use that beauty filters like camera conspiracies. I haven't watched that yet. I must watch that video because I've seen the thumbnail and it looks hilarious. Uh, I'll have to watch it. Michael said, happy birthday. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Kelb says, hey, David, always appreciate your videos. Can't stay too long, but I was wondering if you'd recommend the 85 1.4 or the 1.8 for professional wedding photographer, pro and cons minus. Um, Kelb, it's it's hard to say. I don't have the 85 1.4. I've got the baddest 85 1.8 and I love it. Others will swear by the 1.4. If the ultimate bokeh is what you're after, um, the uh, 85 1.4 is the one to get, clearly, because if you're after the ultimate bokeh, you will get slightly nice bokeh. Um, if you like to travel light like I do, although I've just got the 135 now, so I mean, I can't really say that anymore. Um, if you like to travel reasonably light, uh, the 85 1.8 is fantastic because it's way cheaper and that gives you enough money to buy another lens. Like, you might then have enough probably to buy the 35 1.8 that's coming out. So, it's hard to say. Like I said, if if you want the ultimate bokeh, you can't go past the 85 1.4. But I'm completely happy with the uh, Batis 85, or I'd be happy with the Sony 85 1.8. Um, thanks for the donation, Chris. Uh, Mark says, so Canon have now decided to bring out a new camera to compete with the Sony A9. Oh, so they have, re they have released that, have they? Mark, I'll have to look at that. Uh, after the, today's show. Does it look, guys, the ones that have looked at the Canon camera that's been announced, does it look good like it could compete with the A9? Let me know. Oreo said, in your videos you often shoot with naked head. <laughs> Perhaps you should wear it, bear it more often. I know. The, the problem is, Oreo, that this is damaged from when I was a child. Um, I've always been very, very fair, and so I've, I've just had skin damage. Um, it, it's... It's, you know, it can be bad. And the thing is, you've just got to be very conscious of it. I mean, my mother, I don't like going on sob stories, but my mother died at 48 from melanoma. So uh, it did kill her, but she left it for months and months. And it became this big sore on her leg and it was bleeding. That wouldn't happen now because nowadays we're so switched on to getting checked. But I do say to Australians particularly, the Australians that watch me, guys, you have to watch your skin because we do have the worst rates of skin cancer in the world. And, you know, I'm living proof of that. I've had one cut out already, and this is probably one as well that I'm going to have to have a bit, bit of a bigger cut. I'm not worried about it, but, um, you know, you've just got to get them early and you need to have be constantly checked like I am. Um... David, you... Uh, you, you too old to have a birthday more often. <laughs> Jelani gave me $2. Oh, I read that before. Thank you, guys. Uh, Stacy said, happy birthday, old man. The Tamron is available for Madarama pre-order now. Oh, it is available now. Um, David, the Lexio LEG RDB Light one really nice. Oh, no, I'd like to look at that, uh, Michael. Michael's saying the uh, Luxio LED RGB Light is really nice. I've got two of them, and they are nice and super affordable. How much were they, Michael? Um, happy birthday from Houston. Like I said, this is the best because I get two birthdays. I love it. I get one here in Australia and then one with you guys overseas. Um, there's no uh, Canon alternative to the A9 as yet. Wearing a cap is a good idea, David. Yep, I always wear a hat. Always. But like I said, Carl, I've had this damage since I was a kid, unfortunately. And, and when I was younger, no one wore hats. And, that, and that's the problem. Uh, Australia is under that large hole in the ozone layer. Yeah, I know. It certainly is. All right, so let's get started, and then we'll get stuck in. So let me put down... I'll, I'll bring up the logo, and then I'll start that show. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, good evening, whatever uh, your time zone is around the world. Um, I've mentioned a couple of times, so just so people don't panic when they see this thing or thinking Kerry's hit me over the head, uh, I've just had a potential skin cancer cut out, so don't worry about it if you see it. I'm sure it's going to be okay. Uh, they'll just take a, a, a larger area if it does prove to be skin cancer. I've already had one above my head up there, but that's all I'm going to say about it for now. Uh, it's it's fine though. It, um, they're just called squamous cell carcinoma. They can be deadly if you leave them, but I'm not stupid enough to leave them. So 
99.9% uh, .9 cure rate if you get them early enough. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so let's forget that anyway. But uh, thank you so much for all the birthday wishes. Like I just said, I'm uh, lucky to have a birthday here in Australia yesterday. And it's still my birthday in the US and um, Europe. So I'm having two birthdays. Uh, I love it so much. Um, if you can, give the show a thumbs up, guys, because uh, YouTube's not notifying a lot of people that we're live. Uh, apart from that, uh, I will have the timeline down below. So if you don't want to watch other stories, you can just skip to what you want to go to. Um, and then obviously not watch what you're not interested in. So I'll post that as soon as the live stream is finished. Uh, apart from that, uh, I'm going to go through the stories and then I'll bring up a live chat depending on each story and we can discuss that. Um, and I've got some interesting things to share with you today. So let's get stuck into... Um, the first story. Let me just move this over because I think I need to move this down. So let's go to the first story because I wanted to look at this first today because uh, this is interesting. Now, this is an SR5 and um, it's saying that there's two uh, Sony cameras now coming out due to the sensors that uh, have been announced. Uh, or, or sorry, due to... Um, these keys or whatever they're called, uh, they're registrations that come out. So there's a new one come out. It just says down here that, uh, what a day, folks. I'll move it up so you guys can see it. Um, what? A, oh, hang on, I need to refresh this. It's saying, uh, what a day, folks. Uh, we, we've got 100% confirmation that Sony will soon announce the 35mm f1.8. Now, I'm going to talk about that next, so we won't discuss the um, 35 1.8, I'm just laughing at Casper's comment about my head. Um, we were, yeah, I'll, I'll look at the 35 1.8 next. Uh, but the interesting thing is here, the cameras that they're saying, they think one of the cameras that's registered is probably a new RX or Cybershot camera. And the other camera that they believe is is this Wi-Fi one, this 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which they believe is the A92. Sorry if I still sound like I've got a cold. I have to blow my nose. Um, bear with me just for a second. <laughs> I don't feel sick, but I've still got this cold. I'm going to turn away. Okay. Um, so they're saying there's two cameras that are available uh, there. They're saying one will be an RX camera, uh, and one is going to be this new A92. But uh, there's, there's a couple of things that are, are just are really starting to, I don't know whether it's upsetting me or I'm getting frustrated or what, but where is the A9, where is the A7S III? That's one thing that I'd love to know. And we'll go back to the A92 in a minute. And also, where is the A7000? It seems to be at the moment that those two cameras are just being forgotten and not being mentioned. And it's really interesting how there's no mention now about that coming out. And and I think they're probably needed more than what an A92 is. I don't know whether you guys will agree with me on that, but I think if you look at what Fuji's done with their video, if you look at what Nikon have done with their video, uh, with the higher bit rates, um, certainly better video than what Sony is producing, I think there's a, a much higher need for a video camera than there is for a, a, a new A92. And I'm only saying that because the A9, what we have already, is just so incredible. Uh, and there's nothing can touch it. Now, the only thing, reason why I think that the A92 might be announced before those other cameras now is, and I mentioned this uh, a little while ago in, in a live show, was that there's rumors that uh, Nikon are going to bring out a mirrorless version of uh, their D6 or D5, which will be called the D6. And that um, camera is probably going to have the A9 sensor. I think it's got to the point where Due to the fact that the A9 has been around for nearly three years, I think it's nearly three years, I can't remember, but but I think because it's been around for nearly three years, that they're probably starting to think that uh, we, we want to now try and make some more money on that. Remember, Sony are all about making money from their sensors as well. That's a whole division that they've got there. So I think the reason why the A92 possibly is pushed way ahead of what it normally would be is that they now want to sell that sensor to Nikon. Now, because Sony have always been number one in that, it, well, not always, but they have been since the A9 came out, there's nothing has touched it. The second they give that to Nikon, well, then obviously 
then the A9 doesn't is no longer the number one camera of its type for sports. So they probably do have to bring out another camera to replace that to be Sony's uh, ultimate camera that you can buy in, in the mirrorless range anyway. So it does probably make sense that they're going to bring out an A9 II due to that fact and also that the Olympics are, uh, are next year anyway. So I suppose if you think about it, that there's no better time to bring one out than the Olympics for next year. They've just announced the 600 millimeter lenses. So it probably makes sense that the, an A9 II is coming out. Initially I thought, uh, Oreo said the, uh, is it two years old? Is it Oreo saying the A9 is two years old? Um, so it, 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 even then, even at two years old, it still probably makes sense to me that, that Sony now want to make money off that sensor. Remember, unlike other sensors that Sony have had, that they've put out there, the A9 has been totally Sony's, so they haven't given that to anyone. And that's why the A9 has been so far above everyone else, because no one had access to that sensor. But now that there's rumors that the A9 is going to be, the A9 sensor is gonna be given to Nikon, uh, it probably makes sense that there'll be another A9 uh, release to, to be the pinnacle camera. Like I said, I don't think it's really needed uh, because the A9 is still that far ahead of what's out there. But I do understand that if that sensor is sold on to others, that Sony do want to have uh, something that you know makes them makes the camera better than what anyone else has out there. So there'll probably be an A9 II sensor that will be so, uh, solely uh, used in the Sony A9 or other Sony cameras um, for the next couple of years before that's on sold as well. Uh, that's the beauty of how Sony can do this. They can sort of dumb down the sensor a little bit, take things out and then sell that sensor to someone else. And this is why the Sony sensor division makes so much money. I think the only sensor they haven't done that with though is the A9 sensor. That hasn't been out to anyone apart from Sony. So it's a little bit different with how Sony have done the A9 sensor. They've kept that to themselves. Now that there's that rumor that it might be going to Nikon, I think it might change. So that's the only thing I can sort of say about that, uh, the A9 at this stage. But you know, what really could the A9 have to make us want to, to, to sort of jump over to that? I mean, you could say global shutter could be one of the things that, that, that would interest a lot of people due to the fact that you know you no longer have rolling shutter and things like that. I mean, I've heard some people talk about that they want more resolution in the A9, but I'm not convinced that a sports camera needs more resolution. Like, and, and when I open up the chat, let me know what you guys think about this as well, because I'd love to know what you think about this, but do you think, say, an A9 needs to be, say, 35 or 38 megapixels or whatever those rumors were that I heard that are out there? Because I think for sports, the 24 megapixel is the perfect amount. And even for events, I think that 24 megapixels is the perfect amount. It's a great working file size. It's, it's big enough that you can crop in if you need to. And it's also uh, fast enough that the buffers can write to these things very, very quickly. Now, I know they can probably update the processor, but it's still going to be hard to push a nearly 40 megapixel file size down at 20 frames per second. Um, and I just don't know if it's needed, uh, you know, I mean, Perhaps they can improve the autofocus a little bit, but boy, the, the A9 is already, I mean, I mean, nothing can touch it. So it's, it's interesting. So I'd love to know in the chat when I open this up in a second, what do you think that Sony need to do to make people jump over? Like I said, global shutter to me is, is one that, yes, you'd say, wow, that, that certainly is something that would make me want to go into that area due you know, to the fact that you then lose that sync speed, flash sync speed issue that's there. So that's gone. You, you no longer have banding at all, rolling shutter, that's all gone. So the, there is a massive thing if, if Sony can pull it out, and I'm, I'm not convinced yet it will happen that early, but I hope so, but uh, I'm not convinced yet. But you know, if it's just an update uh, in autofocus and they update the resolution, is that enough to make me probably want to jump over? No. Um, I'm more, like I've said to you, I'm not convinced that I'll get the A9, and everyone laughs when I say that. Uh, I'm more interested in what, for me, I'm more interested in what the A7S 3 has, or the A7000 has, because I'm becoming a fusion type photographer, and I honestly think the A9 is as much as I need at this stage, and I'd love to know what you think about it. Let's open up to the chat, because I'd love to know what you guys are sort of thinking about this. 
Um, and what's happened to the A7000 or the A9? It just seems to have disappeared. Uh, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I just don't know what's going on with that camera. Um, Lanks is just saying evening all from the LA traffic. He's obviously driving home. Chris said Sony Rumors announced the 35. I'm going to talk about that in the next story, Chris. Um, we'll look at that. Sam said, um, damn, do I need to move to Australia so I can have two birthdays? I know, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> I love it. I can have a birthday here and then I can have a birthday uh, at uh, with you guys the next day. And I'm even having my big party on um, Sunday night here. Um, I'm going to, a, just to let you know, I'm going, if anyone is here that's going, I'm going to a Brook Shade and workshop on Saturday, which I'm looking forward to going. I love to go to workshops just to see how others work. Uh, so it's a Sony sponsored workshop, so I'm looking forward to do, uh, going to that on Sunday if anyone's going. Um, Casper said, you already had a hole in your head according to your wife. Ah, <laughs> oh, Casper. Langston said, uh, I can type safely because I'm not moving. That's good, uh, Langston, because you do have to be safe. Lazio said, happy birthday from the west of New York, uh, New Jersey. David, I'm so stuck at what to do. I've purchased the brand new 2470 and the 16 to 35 and don't know if I should sell for new Tamron's. What do you think? Well, no, they're great lenses, what you've got, Lazarus. Why would you want to sell? Uh, I mean, the only reason why I would want to sell those lenses, if you want to have something that's a bit lighter um, and you want to save some money. Now, apart from that, you've got outstanding lenses. They're beautiful lenses. Um, so I think if you've got them, uh, I would just keep them because 16, the other thing you've got to consider too is the 17 wide enough for you. If it's not, then you're going to have to buy another wider lens. Um, so I, I would say, no, you've got two fantastic lenses. I'd just be keeping those two lenses unless you want to save money. If you wanted to save money, you could sell them and then use that money to buy other lenses. If you want to do that, I could fully understand it. Apart from that, no, I would be keeping it. Um, Mike said he's got a matching hole in his wallet too. I love it. Um, Jeff said, keep the GMs. Uh, yeah, the other thing too that you've got to consider too, Lazaro, is you get 20 frames per second if you're on the A9 with those lenses. You won't get that with the Tamron. I think you only get 10. It might be 15, I can't remember. Um, but you certainly don't get 20. Uh, so that's another thing that you have to consider as well. Um, I haven't put my black hole on. Hang on, I need to turn the black hole on. Wait, wait a second. There's the black hole. How could I not turn the black hole on? Thank you so much for that, Jim. I forgot all about the black hole. Uh, Langston said, maybe R&D some features isn't quite ready yet. It might be, um, but boy, you know, what are they gonna be adding? I mean, I suppose it may be worth it in the end, but I seriously would dearly love something like an A7000 or something, like a really good uh, 4K60. Uh, please, Sony, bring out a camera that has 4K60. Um, I'm, I'm so waiting for it. Um, Langston, oh, I'll read that one. Uh, Mark said, I did speak with the Sony rep yesterday saying that there are two full frames in the works and I think there might also be a pro-grade crop camera. He obviously is not allowed to confirm anything. The other thing too is that, I, I mean, I can't see them releasing these all at once because they're all possibly going to take sales away from one another and they don't tend to do that, do they? So if the Sony A9 is announced, uh, like they're saying in the spring for you guys in the US, then does that push the Sony sort of out to near Christmas or a little bit, that I'm talking about the A7000, does that push that out a little bit later or early into next year? These are things that we don't know, like how it's Sony is thinking in the marketing department, but I certainly can't see them bringing out multiple cameras all at once. Uh, it, I just don't think that's gonna happen. <clears throat> Um, Langston says, which makes the A9 kind of weird to announce. Uh, bigger, get a better light. Uh, Chris said, Sony makes likes to use the RX cameras as a lead into their new tech in the higher end cameras. That's true, Chris, they do. Um, so new RX cameras with the A9 technology leading to the A9 II makes sense. A9 II uh, to show off for the Olympics. Casper um, said, keep the G Master, I agree. Uh, Aurea says the A9 is two years old. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it's two or three. 
Uh, you might be right, Oreo, that it is too. Um, Erica says, hello, I'm tardy, but I'm here. Well, at least you're in here, Erica. Uh, Chris said, A9 comes out May 217. Oh, so it was May 217. Okay, so it is roughly two years old. Uh, but what about the A7S? And that's what I'm saying, Sung. What's happened to that camera? We're not hearing anything about it. We're not hearing anything about the A7000 either. And, and that's what's interesting, isn't it, about those cameras that we're not getting anything out of that at all. And it's, it's a bit weird. Um, Altric says if it has a global shutter, I'm in, and I might. Well, I probably would be too, Altric. Yeah, it's look, it, it's going to have to be to make me jump up from having this. It's going to have to be a really big jump because I am so happy with the A9 as it is. It's still the my the favourite camera I've ever had. I just adore it. Like I said, I've even thought about buying another one. I've just held off because I don't know what's going to happen with other cameras, but. Um, at the prices that they're offering for this now, it really, I know, and I, people hate me saying this, but it really is a steal at the price if you can get it for that $1,000 off at the moment. It really is. It, it's an absolute steal for the technology that you're getting in there. Yes, there might be another A92 coming out soon, but the technology in that camera is still going to do you for at least three years. There's no reason why you can't use the A9 in a professional realm for the next three years it's just so good, and, and that's the thing about that camera. Like, it's going to have to be very, very good to make me jump up to a new one. Um, Jelani says, A92 may be between the A7S2 and the A7S3 for video. Well, let's hope that they put profiles in the new A92. I mean, I really do hope that they do that. Aria said, I think Sony needs to put 4K60 into the A92 because photographers are going to want it for Tokyo 2020. Yeah, and I agree with you completely, Aria. Just like Sony held back on the picture profiles on the A9, that was had to be a marketing thing. There's no reason why picture profiles could not be added onto that camera. Um, Casper says they will never sell the A9 sensor, so you don't think they'll ever sell it, Casper? I think they will. I, I think they probably will if they have another uh, camera coming out, Casper. Because remember that... I'm just trying to find where it was. Um, it, I, I think they probably will. Remember, the Sony sensor is a different division to the other parts of Sony. So I think they still are there to make money for themselves. So now that they've had two years with that sensor in the A9, it makes sense if they've got another camera coming out to sell the A9 sensor and then obviously not sell the A92 sensor. I think that probably will happen, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, where are we? Casper says the A9 has one or two years left. Uh, Zoe at moment says, I think Sony will release two to three cameras in close proximity to each other. A92, A7S and A7000. Oh, please help me if that's the case. <laughs> Uh, uh, that, that'd be a tough choice. I'll have to, uh, that's going to be amazing though if that does happen. Um, Ricola is very good for you. What's that, Courtney? What is Ricola? Uh, Chris said, uh, depends if they want the A92 to grab D850 users. If they do, then they'll make a higher megapixel sensor. But, but the ones that are, and I'm still reading these questions, but the ones that are looking at the A9 now, and have got an A9, for instance, would you like a higher megapixel A9? I wouldn't, I don't. Now, I suppose if if they give you an A9 and then there's like, uh, uh, you know, in the menu that you can reduce that resolution down so it cuts down to 24, I, that probably would make me happy. But I certainly don't want to be shooting 38 or 34 megapixels for weddings and things like that and, and any other things that I do. Uh, so I'm happy with 24 megapixels. So I certainly don't want the resolution to go up. But let me know in that chat and even let me know in the comment box down below whether that, you know, that does interest you or not. Um, um, Spiltruck said, 24 megapixels is perfectly fine. I want more dynamic range in body five exposure bracketing. You know, I suppose they can always improve dynamic range. That's a given. So that's something that could be improved, even though it's amazing at the moment. 
Zoe at the moment says uh, Sony will add the same feature on the A7S III to be slightly better than the Panasonic SH1. Well, they have to match it, don't they? They've got to match what Fuji are giving, and they've also got to match what Panasonic are doing. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, Mark said, just received an email from Sigma with statewide sales 10% off. Wow, that's good. Uh, 105, 1.4 at $1,799 AU. Geez, they're great um, prices, uh, Mark. That's Australian he's talking about there. Sigma 50, 998 AU. Thanks for sharing, Mark. Casper said, new camera will be AMAC camera. Don't think so. Uh, Jim says, I predict A92 with 30 to 32 megapixel and global shutter and A7000 with a global shutter as well. Interesting. Ray said, I'm interested in this Sony A92 clearing out the buffer faster. Actually, that's a good point. They, they could increase the buffer, but I've never run up against it, but I don't really shoot sports, so I've never had that issue. But I do do dances jumping across and co shooting continuously, and I've never had an issue with a buffer, but that's the way I shoot. Um, Others may differ on that, so I, I certainly could see, and I have seen reviews where the buffer has been an issue. Uh, it certainly hasn't been for me, but I, I, would, I would suppose it's a given that an A92 is going to have a better processor and a better buffer. That, that, that would be for sure. I always forget about the buffer, actually. They could also improve the memory cards. They could have a faster card, obviously, in slot 2, instead of only having card uh, slot 1 as the faster card, so that could be improved. Um, Chris said Sony needs a new crop sensor there has to be a new one since the A6500 yep they do and that's that's what the A7000 would be uh, Sizzleman said I think another wow factor for Sony would be in-body stabilization similar to a GoPro or DJI action Sizzleman I think that's the future I, I definitely think the future is a mix of optical stabilization and digital stabilization like the Osmo action I, I really believe that to be the case uh, I think you'll probably find that the, it'll peak out now at 5.5 stops like it is, and then they'll just start to incorporate AI for digital stabilization. And, and that, I'm sure, is going to happen. I don't know if it's early enough yet that they could do that yet, though, but you never know what Sony are going to pull out. Look what they did with the A7 III. They shocked everyone with the A7 III, didn't they? So they may do the same thing with these next cameras. They do keep telling us that it's going to exceed expectations. So... Who knows? Uh, Zoet says the A92 will have 4K 60, but the photography features will be very beastly, maybe higher resolution. <clears throat> uh, Cody says, I think Sony have dropped the ball, mate, by holding back and releasing the A7S III. Uh, sure, full frame is epic, but 10-bit and 12-bit internal or external RAW 460 are more epic in my opinion. <clears throat> I agree with you, Cody. Look, they have to answer the higher bit depth rates. They, they've got to answer that and they have to answer 4K60. It's going to come. I just don't know what the holdup is. Perhaps it's heat. It, it could be anything. Uh, we, we just have to wait. And I suppose one way of looking at it is that it's better to wait to get a perfect camera than them to rush it out and then have issues. And I do understand Sony doing that. Um, Altrick said, any recommendations for a first gimbal? Altric, I do love the Moser Aircross, but wait until you see the um, this other review that I'm going to be doing soon. I know it's been sent out to me, the Fayer Tech or something. Um, it's the I think it's the 2000 model that's been sent out to me. So wait until you see that review because I'll let you know which one I prefer out of the Moser and that one. Um, so that that'll be interesting. Uh, I was waiting for the A7000, but I'm going to be getting up the A6400. The A6400 has surprised me. I'm loving that camera. Initially, I was against it due to the fact that no IBIS. Uh, but since I've got it, and the focus is just ridiculous with the touch focus. I mean, I, I've only got it on auto now. But <clears throat> if I touch focus and the tracking, fantastic for gimbal work, I love it. It really is a great camera. So I would say definitely for me, the way that I would shoot, I would get the A6400 before I got the A6500 for sure, just for the focus alone. Um, Jim said, thumbs up, please. Uh, 190 watching, um, less than 100 thumbs up. Here, please, if you can, thumbs up. I really would appreciate it, guys. Um, Altrick said, I want the 35 1.8. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, Soso said, fast global shutter. Camera will appear on smaller sensors, I believe, the one-inch sensor maybe. Yeah, you might be right first. It will appear eventually on full frame, but we just don't know when. 
Um, Jim has put a, a thing there about the global shutter. Oh my God, I know it's going to be uh, incredible. Let me just open that. I'll open a new window. <clears throat> I just want to see what that is. Did it open? Has it gone there? Hang on. Uh, I think there's a thing here they're talking about the global shutter. Has it got a... Um, there's an article here that uh, just got shared, uh, that Jim shared. Sony's new 31 megapixel uh, APS-C sensor has a global shutter and might come with the A6700, A7000. Uh, now you can see here, this is the exact thing that I was talking about, guys, because let me just enlarge this. This is why global shutters are going to be incredible because if you look at um, if you look at this you can see here notice what happens to the fan this this is this is the rolling shutter that you get this is what happens with a traditional shutter like what we have at the moment this on this side is what it will be like if you have a global shutter notice how nothing is bending nothing's distorted um, it, it's it's like I've said to people all along that it, it is only a matter of time before this hits um, and I would think that the A6, A7S3 and the A7000 may have a global shutter and I've said that all along um, and it, it's, it's interesting and they're saying it's a 31 megapixel sensor uh, and there's all detail there. I'll stick this in the link uh, down below. So if anyone does want to read it, I'll leave it there because I'll um, I'll put it in the link box down below so you can have a read of it and put a comment in the description down below. Let me just come back to here. Then we better get on to the next story because we've been for a while on this. Uh, A9 got to come, uh, got to come big or go home. Uh, James said that black hole could be sucked too much. You be light in the studio. I love it. Um, Shama says uh, they're waiting to make the best camera on the market, but like all other cameras are catching up and maybe they are, uh, they, they're just going back to the drawing board. I don't think so because the, the thing is it takes years to develop the cameras. It's not like they can really change much. And this is what you have to understand that the A7S 3 whatever that is, would have been started to be developed probably three years ago. It takes that long to go through the whole pipeline before it's released. So yes, they can change little things, but not, not major things. Delta Dave says, uh, good day, Dave. Uh, it says the A7S will have raw video. Interesting. Michael says, ouch, uh, if that's true, Delta Dave. Um, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the APS-C um, does have a global shutter, uh, the A7000, at all. Um, did I miss something from Delta Dave? I don't know whether I missed something. Um, What else have we got? Casper said, the new phones have three lenses. Not many people care about this stuff anymore. Fact. Um, Las Vegas, sorry for confusion. I wasn't sure what you were saying there, Jim. I must have missed something. Oh, I think he's talking to uh, Gerald. Uh, Gerald says, David is planning to do some Los Angeles first, then go early to Vegas. Yes, I am. So to let you know what's going to happen um, with the US trip that I've got in February, guys, to when I come and meet all of you guys, I'm coming out for four weeks. Uh, I'm going to stay near Santa Monica for the first week um, and then uh, we're going to go, I think I've got two or three three days where we're going to go to Disneyland um, and then we're going to go to Vegas but I'm going to go to Vegas for three days before WPPI and uh, Gerald and Jim are uh, staying in the same place, We've, I'm staying in Planet Hollywood for the, for the WPPA uh, part, but I'm staying somewhere else. I can't remember the name of it for the three days before. I'll let you all know because you can all come and stay and we can all get together and have drinks and party on and have some shooting and stuff. My idea is to do some shoots in the three days before WPPI. I'd love to go out into the desert and stuff like that. Uh, so hopefully we can organize that with Gerald and others. Um, so stay tuned uh, for all of that. And I obviously will want to have meetups in um, Los Angeles. Uh, and also when I drive up to San Francisco as well, I'd love to have some meetups with you guys as well. I certainly will share more info with you as it gets a bit closer. So that's what that's all about. Uh, because he's saying there, uh, go to Vegas and stay in WPPI for a few days after, before that, back to California. Um, 
that's about it. All right, so let's go on to the next story. Let me put on here, um, Sony 135 is, what's the time? Let me just move this over. <clears throat> How did we talk for that long about the A9? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get in trouble again. I'm going to get abused by all of the subscribers again coming in. All right, so let's go and talk about this. I wanted to talk about the um, new 35. It looks like it finally is going to happen. Now, I know Gilbert. The funny thing is um, Gilbert has been talking about this for ages. What's that just said? The live feed is currently on your screen replicated three times. Is it? Is it right now? Oh, let me just see if that fixes itself. I'm just trying to fix this. I think it's gone for it. It's glitched up. Oh, there we go. Come back finally. Don't know what was going on. <clears throat> um, it'll switch a bit because I was, uh, the broadcast is behind. So I'm looking at multiple things. So sorry about that. I'll get back to it. All right, so let's get back to this. Um, <clears throat> I've just noticed too, Fred said, would love to see you do a workshop in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, let me just switch over to that. Fred, I can't do anything that costs money due to the fact that um, I'm not allowed to, due to the fact that I'm Australian and I can't go into the US and earn money, they won't give you a visa. But what I want to do is they can't, there's, there's no problem in me doing a free workshop with all of you guys, just having a meetup and doing it. That's what I intend to do. Uh, so I would love to go out and shoot with all of you guys. It's just not gonna cost anything. I'm not gonna charge money to do anything because I can't do that due to the visa requirements. So um, yeah, we can. there's no reason why we can't have a meetup and all go out and shoot this. It'll be just like a workshop, and it'll be free. Um, all right, so let's look at this uh, 85, uh, 35 1.8. Gilbert is gonna be so happy about this because I know he keeps talking to me about that he's dying to get the, 85, uh, the 35 1.8. And this makes total sense to me. This is a mock-up. Now, this isn't it. Th this is not what they're saying is going to be uh, the lens that's gonna be announced, but they're saying it's pretty close to what they think it will be, and it does make sense to me if you look at the other lenses that are out, like the 85 <clears throat> and things like that. Um, and that's what they're saying it will look like on the camera itself. Uh, but this lens has been sort of rumoured to be around for a long, long time, and I think it's definitely going to be coming out. If you have the 85, which is the cheaper version, if you have the 85 1.8, this is the ultimate lens to stick with that. So you can get that beautiful double, and I shot weddings with this for years, which was just the 85 Battis and my 35, but the 35 was the 1.4, but, but this, is, this will be perfect. If this is as sharp as what the 85 lens is, this is gonna be an amazing lens for the price, and good on Sony for doing this. Uh, there's no guess yet about what the uh, cost will be, uh, the lens next to it's the 50, I think they're saying. Um, they're saying the comparison is to the 50 1.8, but I guess the real lens will look very close to it. Um, again, it's exciting. It's another lens that Sony have produced. It, it's a lower cost lens, so if you don't want to spend too much money, say, on the Zeiss uh, 1.4 um, or even the uh, 2.8, which is pretty expensive, it'll be interesting to see what this comes out at. It probably will be about that price range. But if you are after that 1.8, 35mm, uh, fantastic, and good on Sony for doing it. This will match perfectly with the 85 1.8, uh, and I think it's it's going to be great. Uh, it's probably not one that I will get, um, but uh, I know people like Gilbert uh, are dying to get one. Let me know in your comments down below whether you are looking forward to getting this. Like I said, if it's a cheaper option, uh, it would be great. This is also probably a really good lens on APS-C as well because it would give you about a 50 mil. Uh, so it's gonna be a great lens on APS-C and I, I love buying full frame lenses and sticking them on the APS-C because then I can just move them and use them on the full frame as well. Um, so fantastic, and another it's just another lens that Sony are gonna drop fairly soon. Uh, fantastic news. I'm gonna keep moving there, guys, because we'll be here too long. Um, let's go to the next story. Uh, I just wanted to share this because the first test, this is the first one that I've seen that, that's come out that's, that's probably a neutral one. First Tamron 17 to 28 FE lens review. Uh, it's even a bit sharper than the Sony 16 to 35 GM. 
Um, now, it's interesting because I read somewhere else that the MTF charts uh, were a bit different to that, but this is what's different sometimes, that, and, and you have to be very careful when you're reading MTF charts because MTF charts often don't relate to real life shooting. And that's what I've found when I'm looking at things. Like, I get people saying to me, David, but the, it hasn't got, this lens hasn't got good MTF charts. And then I look at the image and it's outstanding. And I just think, well, I only care about what the image looks like. And, and that's what matters to me. So let's just discuss this anyway, but, oh, I should put the time on here actually, 54. Oop, uh, what were we? 54. I'll just put 54. Um, they're saying that it's sharper than the GM, but let, let's have a look what they're saying. They're actually saying it's a German company uh, that's given the full review of it. Uh, and they're saying in summary, at the center at 17 mil, the Tamron is as sharp as the Sony at 17. Uh, in the border of the image, the 17 millimeter Tamron is sharper on the edges than the Sony at 17 millimeter. Uh, at 28 millimeter, it's the same kind of results, so it's similar to the GM version. At 28 millimeter, uh, the uh, Tamron is sharper, is as sharp, sorry, um, as the 28. Oh, okay, so they're saying at 28 mil, the 17 to 28 is as sharp as the 28 to 75, and I found that to be really sharp. Uh, the 17 to 28 FE is as sharp as the Sony 28 F2, and that is a great lens. I know Gerald loves that lens. Uh, and he's saying that it's as sharp as that lens. Um, and the Prime has more chromatic aberrations. There is little uh, chromatic aberration, green and not magenta. There, so they're saying there's only a small bit, but that can be fixed easily in post later on, particularly when the lens profiles come out. Colors looks very natural. Autofocus is very fast. Autofocus overall is uh is fast. Overall, the lens is excellent. Now, there's a video there. I'll put the link down below so you can have a look at it. Um, but I just think that, look, there's two things here that, that you have to consider. If you like 16 mil, then obviously this lens is not for you. Or there's another option that you can go for. You can get the, you can get this lens and then buy a, a good wide angle with the money you save. Because remember, there's a massive difference in cost. You could go out and get a Laura or something like that. You could go and get a great, really wide lens with the same money you're saving. So don't be held back by that. It just really depends on what you would like to do. It also depends which way you'd like to go in, in the lens overall. If you've, say, got the Tamron 28 to 75, this is a great fit. Because next, there'll be a 70 to 200. I've got no doubt that the next lens they release, zoom lens, will be the 70 to 200, probably this time next year. Then you've got the Holy Trinity, and if you don't want to spend too much money, it's gonna be fantastic if you'd like to go down that realm. Um, will they replace the GM? No, they won't, because the GM has a, it has a mil wider, which is a millimeter, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. Um, so that that's there also. It also won't shoot 20 frames per second. So if you're dealing with sports, and things like that, that can be a big difference if you're shooting with something like the A9. So you haven't got that uh, ability either. You know, you haven't got the controls on the, the camera, like the GM always tend to have, uh, you know, your focus uh, rings, and some of the, the GM lenses have your defocus rings, uh, the zooms don't, but uh, you will have your focus th uh, rings and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so you have to make a decision. I'd be happy with, uh, having that lens because I've already got the Tamron. And I may even consider when I get a try of one later to sell the 16 to 35 F4, I might. I don't know yet, but I might and then get this lens. Uh, and then I will buy a uh, faster lens. I mean, I looked at, when I was shooting with Hannah, or uh, when I was at Hannah the other day in Melbourne, Hannah Sober, uh, he gave me a, a try of his, um, um, can't remember the name of the brand. I mentioned it just before. If Hannah's still here, he'll let us know. Uh, but it was uh, an amazing, I think it was a 10 to 18 mil wide angle um, lens. It was manual focus though. Someone even in the chat may let me know. Um, it was a 10 to 12, uh, yeah, I think it was 10 to 18 mil uh, FE lens. It was gorgeous. I mean, stunning. And I think that was about, I think it was about $1,200 or $1,300. Now that's Australian, US it would be cheaper. So you could, <clears throat> what I'm saying is you could buy, say, the Tamron 17 to 28 
and still probably have almost enough money to go out and buy a really nice wide angle prime as well or a wide angle zoom uh, like that lens was. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a hard decision. I mean, only you would know if you want to go down the GM uh, line. If you do, the GM line is fantastic. Uh, if you don't, the good part is you've got an option that's cheaper that will act like a Sony lens in the fact that you can upgrade it, uh, the firmware in the camera, uh, etc. Uh, you just lose features like the 20 frames per second. So you've got to look at what what is right for you. Uh, but it looks like looking at this review that the lens is going to be pretty good. I noticed um, someone said it was on pre-order now at Adorama, so it will be probably also at B&H. Uh, and um, Amazon shortly as well, if, if it's not already available. Um, so just wanted to let you know about that. Um, let me know in the comment box what you think about that, because I'd love to know what you guys think about that. It looks like from that, though, it seems to be like it's going to be pretty good, and I would have expected that after using the uh, 17 to, uh, sorry, the 28 to 75. If you look at the size, it'd be a nice gimbal lens, though. Um, you can see it's nice and small. Uh, it probably is still the 67 millimeter filter thread, uh, which would be nice as well. So you can share the filter thread between all of your lenses. Um, it'll be probably very light, nice and light too. And I've found that the Tam the Tamron's in the other room actually. Uh, I've found that the Tamron is incredibly robust in its build quality. It doesn't look it, but my Tamron still looks as good as the day I bought it. And you know, I'm pretty rough with my lenses. <clears throat> All right, so that's that story. Let's go on to the next one, which is just talking about the Metabones, and then we're going to open up Q&A. One. Uh-oh. 53. Oh, one oh. oh, it's one minute one. All right, so let's go to the next one. Uh, actually, I just wanted to talk about this. It's the Sigma, actually. I need to put that in there. Uh, I've got that wrong. That was the Sigma. I put the wrong time in. Can't do that because uh, I'll get abused. Sigma. Let me just put that in. It's 101. I only wanted to talk to you about this because I know I mentioned, I put up a video about it the other day, was that the Sigma, this is interesting what Sigma are doing because Sigma looks like they're going to bring out a 1.2 FE lens. I know it's still a rumor. It's an SR3, so there's still a chance that this may not eventuate, but it wouldn't surprise me. Um, the only thing that will surprise me though is if Sigma beat Sony to this, because I know Sony said they wanted to bring out a really fast Prime, and, and I actually thought that they would have brought out a 85 1.2 or, or a 35 1.2. This is what I think Sony will bring out first. Um, but it looks like they may be beaten to it by um, Sigma. Um, this is the first lens too that they're talking about that is designed by Sigma for the mirrorless mount. So it should be smaller uh, because it's designed fully for the mirrorless mount. That, that's the first time they've done that. So it's quite exciting. And I do hope this does eventuate because if this is as good as their other art series lenses, if it's a little bit smaller than what they are at the moment, because at the moment it's like the MC11 is bolted onto the bottom. If they can get a really good uh, lens design that is built for Sony mirrorless, uh, it is going to be a big lens. Look, if it's 1.2, there's no way they can beat physics. It's still going to be a reasonably big size lens, but it's certainly one that I would love to try. Um, and it's quite exciting. And they're, they're saying that there's going to be a June, a July, August announcement. Uh, and it is going to uh, be a, an F 1.2 lens, ultra fast and silent AF. So they're saying it'll be a, a really good lens for video as well. Um, but how exciting, I mean, how exciting is it at the moment to be shooting Sony? I mean, seriously. And this is why I loved uh, that lenses now are going to come out, because it's going to shove it right up all of those people that say the Sony mount is a problem. Well, if Sigma can build a 1.2 lens, uh, the, the Sony mount is not a problem, because you don't really need anything wider than that. We already have 0 0.95, but they're manual focus lenses. Uh, it, it really is all you need. So I think it really sort of shoves it up that bit about Sony, not the mount is no good and, and things like that. And I think that's great. Anyway, I, I think it's great news. I really hope this comes about. I really can't wait to see Sigma design lenses for the Sony mount where it truly is built correctly and without just adding that MC11 bolted onto the bottom. 
I think it's just exciting. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, last story before we open up to Q&A. Um, let me just put that down there. 104. Uh, this is the last story. I'm only going to talk about this quickly because I haven't got one, so I can't talk about this in, in with great detail because I haven't had the Metabones adapter. But I believe there's just been a update that now allows you to use the Metabones adapter on the Sony cameras on the a7 III. Uh, you can get 10 frames per second now with AFC. Now that, that's pretty cool if you are dealing with using adaptive lenses. I have the MC11. I mean, I, I really like using, uh, you know, I, I really do like using this. And, th and this surprised me how well this went uh, with the 135. I was amazed at how well it actually worked. I updated it the other day to a new firmware as well, but I haven't tried it since. But but this um, has just been updated. So they're saying now you get 10 frames per second, um, maximum continuous autofocus, which, which I think is, is fantastic. Um, frame rate uh, on the uh, AFC frame rate to the Sony A9. So I don't know whether it's saying uh, company virals bought the same function. Oh, yeah, okay. It already would do t uh, 10 frames per second on the A9, but now they've brought that functionality to the A7 III. Um, but anyway, fantastic. So that's available. So if you have got the Metabones, uh, update the firmware and you're going to get a much better frame rate out of your camera. All right, so let's open up to a Q&A. Uh, what time are we on? 105, 106. Let's see what you guys all have to say. Um... <clears throat> Carl says, if Sony puts a global shutter in the APS-C camera, it will send the other companies back to the drawing board. That will be a game changer. Yeah, and it would, Carl, but it would not surprise me at all if Sony can do it. If anyone can do it, Sony can. And like I said, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, they have said all along that uh, we are going to get give something that goes way over what the, that you would expect. Uh, and they've said that, uh, exceed client expectations. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what that could be. Um, Courtney says, uh, which one should I get? Sony 70 to 200 F4 or the 70 to 200 2.8? Well, I've only, I haven't got the 70 to 200 2.8, Courtney. I've got the 70 to 200 F4 and I love it. It depends if you need the low light ability. If you need the low light ability, like if you're working in low light uh, conditions, uh, the 70 to 200 2.8 is the one to get. Uh, I find that I tend to, the second that I go into darker environments, I grab the prime out. I, like I'll use the 135 1.8 or I'll use uh, the Badass 85 1.8 or even a 35 or a 24 now. Um, so having the 2.8 doesn't really matter that much to me. Um, the 70 to 200 is way lighter, so it's much easier if you want to travel around during the day. Uh, they're both almost as sharp as one another, so you're not really going to see a, a, a little much difference at all uh, in the sharpness between the two of them. Um, and also the bokeh, because if you're dealing with shooting around 200 mil, they'll both look pretty similar anyway. Um, it just depends really if you want the low light ability. I mean, the, the G Master is a better lens. Let, let's not, uh, I'm not going to deny that at all. The G Master is a different lens, but it's way more expensive, uh, it's way heavier. Uh, but if you need the 2.8, you need the 2.8, and there's no way of getting around it. Uh, that That's really all I can say to you, Courtney, is if you need low light, you get the GM. Um, oh, and also, if you need 20 frames per second, that's another thing, and I'll keep forgetting that. If you've got an A9, the GM will give you 20 frames per second. The 70 to 200 will give you 15. Um, Jim said that Global Shutter article is nearly a year old. Yeah, it'll move, it will have moved a lot on since then, Jim. Um... Gerald said, uh, David is planning to do Los Angeles first. Oh, I've already read that one. Um, uh, Peter said, global shutter really is just an electronic shutter. Yep. But it can work with flash, remember. Uh, Jim said, uh, thanks PMU on which media? I'm not sure what that means. Oh, hang on. Where did we go? I hate that. Oh, there we are. Um, oh, 
That's it. Yeah, thanks, Brent. Iowa. Uh, Iowa. Oh, oh, I think that's how you pronounce it, is it? Iowa or Laura? I always get confused how to pronounce it, but it was the Laura. I think that's how you pronounce it. It was the 10 uh, to 12 mil, or was it 10 to 18? I can't remember, but it was beautiful. It was stunning. Manual focus, but boy, did it feel good. They feel like the Voigtlanders, and that's what I loved about it. It felt amazing. And remember, if you're dealing with something that's so wide, having manual focus is not a problem anyway. Uh, Courtney says, I can't wait for the, oh, here it is. I think I've got a delivery. Hang on, guys. Ch chat amongst yourselves. Is that the box you sent me, Gerald? I don't know whether it is or not. Um, just let us know in the chat. I won't open it now, because it'll... Uh, let's go back to here. B&H, it's still on... The, oh, so the lens isn't available yet, so it's still on the wish list, is it? Courtney says, I can't wait for the Tamron 70 to 200 2.8. Hopefully 2.8 and not a four. I think the Tamron will be a 2.8 because it'll match what the 17 to 35 is, uh, 17 to 28 and the um, 28 to 75. It'll, it'll be 2.8 for sure. Um, so it's not on pre-order yet at B&H. Okay. Uh, Jean said, I want to order the Tamron 17 to 28 for events and landscape, but also I and the Rockion 85 1.4. Yeah. yeah, I'd still like to try that. I really am interested to see if I can get a review unit of that somehow. Um, I'd love to try that lens out to see what it's like, Gene. I really would. Um, see, Mike said he's got the Rocky on 85 1.4 and love it. How is it for video, Mike? Have you found it? Is it reasonably good for video? Because uh, I'd love to know that. Um, thank you so much for the thumbs up to you guys because we've got over 100. Thank you so much. Uh, when Sigma coming out with a 1.2 that I'm in? Yeah, well, they're saying it sometime this year, so it is going to be exciting. David, SR3 and Alpha Rumors is called a lie. <laughs> I hope it's true, Michael. Um, uh, what else have we got? Cough, happy photographer, cough. What does that mean? <laughs> Carl says the uh, mount is fine. Um, it is, the mount is fine. There's nothing wrong with the Sony mount. You keep hearing people talk about that. Remember, the funny thing is they'll always try and pick something on Sony. They used to pick our lens lineup. Well, they can't do that anymore because Sony have a, an amazing lens lineup. Then they used to talk about the focus. They can't do that anymore either. Then it became other things. Now it, it's become the lens mount. They will always try and find something to attack Sony. And it's just what they do. Um, Gerald says, I might be interested in that Sigma 35 1.2. Yeah, me too, Gerald. Um, Hero says, the MC11 is 149. I doubt anyone is going to buy 600. Is that how much that is? Is the Metabone 600? Wow, why would you bother? Um, that's ridiculous. I mean, I'm really happy with the Sigma MC11. I have heard, though, that... Um, I have heard that the uh, Metabones is much more solid though. Like if you're putting really big lenses on it, uh, that, you know, it, it can be an issue. I think, didn't Jason Lanyers break his MC11 and he had to use a Metabones adapter when he was using the 400 F2 or something? 2.8, I mean. Um, Someone else just gave me a donation. Long Rider. Thank you so much, Long Rider. I appreciate that. Uh, where were we up to? Um, 
Stuart said, good morning, David. G'day, Stuart. Chris said, uh, when you go to CA, uh, when you go from CA to Vegas, will you be driving and just flying? Now, I think what we're going to do, uh, Chris, we're still deciding at this stage, but I think when we go to Vegas, going there, we'll fly. And then I think we'll hire a car and drive back um, through the desert and also then drive straight up to, to Yosemite, that's as long as we can get in with snow, up to Yosemite and then to um, San Francisco. So I think that's probably what we'll do. So we'll fly in first, but then drive out. I, I think that's what we're gonna do. Um, Michael said, I have the Metabone speed adapter, but I bought it before the MC11 came out. Oreo said, I'm going to release a 70 to, 400, uh, 70 to 200 low light video soon. Yeah, because I use it quite often, Oreo, and it's, it's very, very good. Remember, the ISO on these cameras now is nuts, what you can do with ISO in these cameras, and you'd be surprised what you can get away with, as long as you expose right. Hero says 70 to 200 f4 is fine. Yep, I love my 70 to 200 f4. Martin said, should I get the Sony 24 1.4 or the Sigma? I'd get the, uh, the Sony, definitely. Uh, the reason why I say that is due to the fact you have the declickable aperture ring. That's fantastic for video. It's really light. Uh, you get the uh, also the focus buttons on the lens as well. This is superb. I, I adore that lens. I really do adore it. Um, so I would get the I'd get the Sony 24 Martin. Um, 2.8 ain't worth the extra $1,000. He's talking about the Sony 70 to 200. Gerald says the F4 lens cannot take the 1.4, and that's a good point, Gerald. So that's another thing too. If you do want to use the extenders, um, you can't with the F4 version. So if you do want to, you know, get a longer range out of it, you can't. There's definite advantages with going with the GM if you can afford it. Um, Stuart said, plus I've got the Sigma 105 1.4. While at DigiDirect, uh, they had their 15% sale. That's fantastic, Stuart. Um, Michael said, not again. Are you talking about deliveries, Michael? Um, this might be what Gerald sent me, though. I'm not sure. Uh, another lens? No, it's not a lens. Uh, just tried ordering the Tamron 7035 from Adorama. Got a message. The pre-order is only available in store. Wow, that's weird. Um... Facebook police, KFC, Uber Eats, two day, I love it. You guys crack me up. Imagine if the delivery was a Tamron 17 to 28. Yeah, I know, imagine if it was. Uh, if the global shutter's arriving, it could take a while. Uh, David's going to have to buy flowers again. <laughs> Uh, so do we get an unboxing live? G'day mate, laugh at their flowers. Casper said, uh, if I get sufficient number of good photos, I'll get the 1.4 telly. Um, Martin says, I will get 20 frames per second out of the A9 if I use the Sigma 135 Art. No, you won't. You'll, you'll probably get 10. The maximum I think I get on the Sony, like the 70 to 200 f4 is 15. Um, some lenses will give you 15, uh, but a lot of the lenses you'll only get 10. I'm pretty sure the Sigma you'll only get 10. So Woody says he hasn't been impressed with the lower lenses for Astro. Too much coma, interesting. Um, Nilsa said 30 to 36 megapixel could make a good A92 better if the auto focusing and shooting speed remains the same but the buffer will have to be much larger with two QXD slots yeah it will that's the thing if they're going to up the resolution like that they're going to have to go to something like QXD for sure um, Raw said um, instead of a wider aperture lens uh, we should all get a Profoto A1X like Dave, save my penny, save my penny. You'll love that. That's an amazing little flash. Um, Michael said, um, oh no, what's David's new, new binoculars? Uh, did you see my post, David, about the 7200 not being able to? Oh, yes, I did, Gerald. I mentioned that. That's a good, very good point. Very good point. Um, Aurea said, Peter Lingren said that the Sammy 85 is not good for video. Oh, interesting. See, that would put it out for me if it's not a good video lens. I need both now. Um, Aurea said, P oh, I read that one. Uh, Atom says, a new lens delivery, 17 to 28, David fainted. <laughs> I really want the Sigma 35 1.2. That'll be fantastic. I'd love to try that lens. Aldrich said, I have the, Sig uh, the Samyang 35 1.4 and want to go all Sony lenses, at least the ones I can afford. And I can completely understand that, Aldrich. It's always best to go native. But having said that, this Sigma 16mm is one of my favorite lenses. I adore this lens, it is brilliant. 
Uh, works as good as a native lens, super fast, super fast focus. I adore it. Um, Rocky on 85, great for portraits, video lacks. And hopefully with firmware then, Mike, they may be able to, to fix that a little bit. Um, long riders are here, yes, okay, long rider. Ray Davis said, um, no New York City visit. No, I don't think so, Ray. I don't think I've got the time or the money this trip. I love it. Look, I went to New York last time we were in, um, uh, in the States and I adored it. Uh, if I had the money, um, I would go to New York for a week in that time without, in a heartbeat because I do, I, I love it. Uh, the only thing I, I can say, I suppose, is perhaps some of you may be able to pop over at that time um, and meet us at WPPI or something like that or whatever. Um, I will go. I will come back to New York though uh, because it's one of my favourite places. I will definitely go back there. I just don't know when. I would have loved to have come over, but I just ran out of funds basically. Um, you should drive lots of iconic spots, yeah, and that's why I am intending to do a lot of driving, hero. Delta Dave says drive to Lake uh, Tahoe from Yosmite. You won't regret it. I know, Dave. Yeah, send me places where you think I should be going. I, I'm so looking forward to doing it. Chris said, if you fly uh, fly out of Ontario, California, you will thank me. Less people going in and out. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for saying that, Chris. Um, just said, I always use Ontario. Is it Ontario or Ontario? Uh, when I travel to that area. Ray said, no connection made with John Sasson. He is in Melbourne last. No, I, I don't know him at all, uh, Ray. I met Hannah, though, uh, last week, though, which was really good. First time I've met him. Uh, we're going to organise another shoot together, I think in December, or I may even go up to Sydney and we might do a shoot together uh, as well. Um, Hannah was a Blake, great bloke. Um, Ray said, no, oh uh, yeah, no connection, yeah. Um, Jim said, once you have eclipsed the age of 60 years, you look behind yourself when you stand up uh, to check your any parts that may have fallen off. <laughs> I know, big 60 today in America for you guys. So I'm so happy that I could share my birthday with you guys. Um, uh, Ray, Ray said, why do you need uh, to overexpose so much with Pro Photo? Every event, they ask you to bump up exposure. I don't know, I've never had that, Ray. Um, not sure. Um, Junction said, I'm still waiting on the nice Sony one, uh, Zeiss 1.2. Um, Michael said, Las Vegas is one of the best places for a photo shoot. There are no restrictions in the desert. Los Angeles is the worst. Oh, okay. If you don't uh, per plan the location to make sure everything goes right. Yeah. See, I'm not used to that because here we can just shoot anywhere. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Um, I hope you're going to join us, Michael, though, doing something. Marcella said, I think if Sony should make a standard F2 zoom lens. Um, Chris said, uh, David, do you think... That, that Tamron will bring their 35 1.4 out for Sony. Yes, eventually I do. I think uh, eventually the market is that good now for Tamron on Sony that they'll release all of those lenses eventually native. Um, and that's about it. Uh, you go to Moor Woods. No, where's that? Um, I've never been there, Mike. Jim said, Michael, are you going to WPPI, correct? And that's about it, guys. I think I've caught up with everything. I have to unbox this box in a second to find out what's in it. Do you want me to do it live so you can see what's in there? Just say yes or no in the chat. <coughs> if, you don't, if you're not interested, I won't bother. <coughs> I don't even know where the pin is. I'm still waiting on people to say in the chat whether you're interested in the unboxing or not. Leslie just gave a dollar. Thank you so much, Leslie. Really appreciate that. Uh, that's another birthday coffee I can buy or something. <clears throat> so you're interested for a live chat? Chris said, I know a few areas about an hour drive from LA that's good for shoots. Ario said, yes. There are places in LA to shoot like Venice uh, Beach. No special arrangements to be made. Uh, everyone's saying live. Is this from you though, Gerald? I don't know, is it? Was that from you, Gerald? All right, let me get, I'll have to get a... I'll have to get a knife. It's all right, I'll use some scissors. I've got no idea what it is. Let's do it.
Let's do it. Just imagine if this was the Tamron. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. Well, it wouldn't be hilarious. I'd be pretty excited. I'm pretty excited no matter what it is. Oh, this is from Gerald. Yes, it is. Ooh. So, Gerald has been really fantastic. So what he has sent me are a few, I'll show you what I've got there anyway. He sent me a few travel books that I'm gonna be able to look at um, for while we're in Vegas with you guys. Now it's interesting, Gerald, see how quick that came? The other one never showed up and I'll talk to you guys about it. Um, so yeah, he sent me some fantastic things that I can have a read of. But this is the main thing that I've been so excited about having a look at. I know the knife I should get out. <laughs> Hero says you can't call that a knife. I know, it's pretty bad. So it's this. So this is the, um, wow, that box is amazing, Gerald. Now let me just tell you the story. Before we finish, I'm gonna tell you what Gerald's done for me here um, because it was pretty amazing. He won't like me to tell this, but it's pretty special what he did. I didn't expect him to do it at all. Um, I ordered this lens, this filter, from Amazon and I couldn't get it shipped to Australia. So I actually um, asked Gerald if I could um, get it sent to him and then he would ship it to me here in Australia. And he said, yes, no problem. That's the type of guy Gerald is. I mean, he, he will do anything for you. Um, and it, it got sent to him and then he sent it to me uh, in Australia. This was a few weeks ago. Uh, the unfortunate thing was that Gerald was traveling around uh, Vegas, actually. He was traveling around the Grand Canyon and areas like that. And I think he got someone else to send it to me uh, in his absence. And unfortunately, they didn't put any tracking uh, or insurance on the package. Um, so I, I'm, it, I think it's got stolen. So it got stolen because it never appeared here. And I said to Gerald, things come pretty quick. And, and that's the proof because like, it usually comes within a week when anything's sent from the States. And I was just gonna say, well, it's just bad luck, that's the way it is. But Gerald was insisting that he replaced it for me. Now, I have to tell you that this was $300 US and um, Gerald bought this out of his own money. He insisted to do it. I said, don't do it, please don't do that. He insisted that he replace it out of his own money and he sent this to me. So I owe Gerald a very um, great deal and I'm certainly going to make it up to him when I meet him in uh, Vegas uh, when we're over there in um, in February. Um, so thank you so much Gerald and I wanted to point that out um, because it, it, you didn't have to do that at all. I would have just put it down to it can happen, things disappear uh, and stuff like that. He made sure this time that we put tracking on it and um, you know and it showed up. So thank you so much Gerald. I will do an unboxing of this and I'm also going to review it because I want to make sure that this is worth the money that it is against say using my um, other filters that I use uh, which are all 67 so I'll let you know when I review it if it's actually worth it um, but thank you so much Gerald for what you did uh, like I said I didn't expect that at all um, and I really really appreciate uh, what you did and I certainly will make it up to you when we meet in the States so thank you so much. So that's what that is. Um, they are incredibly expensive. Like I said, $300 US uh, for these filters. Uh, so I'm certainly gonna let you know whether it's worth it when I review it. So it, it's not been sent to me by, uh, them. I paid for the original one. Uh, I just couldn't get it sent to Australia. And then Gerald paid for this to come to me because that disappeared. So thank you so much, Gerald. Really appreciate it. Um, I say, and I, it's funny because it is like my birthday, Gerald. I'm going to put this down as my birthday present from you, mate. And I, like I said, I certainly will make it up to you when um, I come out uh, to the state. So thank you so much. Uh, so that's all. So apart from that, um, I'll see you all again, guys, for the next video. Um, stay tuned. Uh, thank you so much for the support. I've got 112 likes. I really appreciate it. Like I said, you guys mean the world to me. I've shared my birthday with you as well, which has also been fantastic. Uh, and I really do mean it. I, You guys mean everything to me. All right, guys. Catch you all soon. Bye for now.
It's a 67, yes, it's a 60. This is the 67 millimeter filter. Now, just before I go, there's two versions of this, and this is where it's interesting, about, and I'll have to buy the other version. Gerald, don't buy me the other version. Uh, there's also a um, two to five stop ND, uh, and then there's the six to 10 stop ND. Now, the way that these work is I believe if you have these type of filters, let me just see if I can get this off and I'll show you what I mean. Um, this is a Hoya one. Um, these filters, if you turn them, they will go from almost, like I said, two. If you're looking at it, you can see my eye through there now. And then if I turn it around, you'll see that it goes very dark. Now, the, the problem with variable NDs is if you try, if you're in a very bright environment and you want to say shoot a waterfall or something like that and you want to take out all the ambient exposure, you have to close these right up. Now, if you close them right up, you can start to get cross, uh, crosses appear uh, over the filter. And it's just a fact of how these variable uh, NDs work. Now, I believe this one doesn't do that. Uh, and that's the reason why they've split them up between a two to a five and a six to 10. So you can put this on full and you won't get that crosshair that comes out through your ND filter. But uh, like I said, I'll have to test it. Uh, I certainly will let you know whether I think it's worth it or not. Um, because it's not a sponsored video because I've paid for it and Gerald paid for it. So I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, so that, that's what that is. So yes, it is a 67 mil. The reason why I love that is because I can stick it on my, uh, Tamron, uh, lens. I can also stick it on the 24 1.4, uh, lens. I can stick it on the 28 to 75 Tamron as well. Um, and also I think it's on this lens as well. The 10 to 18 is also 67, isn't it? Yeah, I know that's 62. There was another lens that I've got that's 67 as well. I can't remember what it was. Um, so that's it. All right, guys. Catch you all. I'll see you all. I'm going to head down for a birthday coffee again. And even though it's not my birthday again, it still is in the States and in the UK. Uh, see you all soon for the next video. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, and I'll see you all soon. G'day from down under. Bye for now.